welcome to today's video. We are starting it off with Bowie, my Brazilian rainbow boa, because we are going to be talking about slow moving reptiles today because my favorite reptiles are the ones that are slow moving. I made a whole video about like fast moving reptiles and reptiles that people want to keep for like adrenaline. Not my thing. I personally like to keep reptiles because they relax me. So the relaxing ones for me are always going to be the slow moving ones like Bowie here. So I'm going to tell you guys my list of top six best slow moving reptiles for today. This is going to be good for people like me that just prefer slow moving reptiles or people that are maybe newer to reptiles and are a little bit fearful because they don't understand them yet. So look at how cute she is, but she's so slow moving. She's a perfect example. So we're going to dive into it. I'm not going to keep her out the whole time because she is slow, which is great, but she does consistently move and sometimes she likes to get caught up in my plants and stuff. So I'm going to have to put her back for the rest of the video. But here is Bowie and we are going to jump right in. All right guys, so we are going to dive right in. Chacho is going to be in and out doing his own thing. So the very first reptile on my list that I think is perfect for people that want a slow moving reptile are African fat tail geckos. They are very similar to leopard geckos, but I find that leopard geckos can be a little bit faster than African fat tails. African fat tails are just typically known to be very, very chill. And if you hold them, they may move around a little bit, but they typically just kind of stay in one spot on your hand and they don't really run away. Um, for this entire video, every animal, of course, is going to have its own behaviors and tolerance levels and personality. So some of them may be more active than others, but generally speaking, African fat tails are a really great species to go for if you want something slow moving. Um, I think that they're really great for people that are getting into the hobby and want something as a beginner reptile because maybe they're a little bit scared or they're just trying to become more comfortable with reptiles in general. Even if you have like a little kid and you're trying to introduce them to reptiles, I think African fat tails are one of the best options for that. Um, they typically don't bite, they don't really run away, and they kind of just sit there. They're super cute, they have great personalities, and they're very, very slow moving. I think that they're very underrated in the reptile hobby. Um, everyone knows what a leopard gecko is and you see them all over the place. African fat tails are very similar in care and personality and everything. They're typically a little bit smaller than leopard geckos, not as common but they are so worth it. I absolutely love them. So I had to give them some recognition in this video. Number two is probably the most basic one that you would assume would be on this list and that is tortoises. So tortoises are typically very slow moving. Something that people mix up is the difference between turtles and tortoises. Turtles usually are aquatic and they are actually very, very fast on land. They can run very, very fast. Tortoises cannot. They are going to be a slow species. They walk like they're a hundred years old. They can live to be a hundred years old and they are just like the cutest things ever. Um, they're really good for, again, people that are just new to the hobby and looking for something to become comfortable. They will definitely help you build um, more of a tolerance or acceptance for reptiles because they're not very scary. They don't really bite and they're really cute and slow moving and just very relaxing for people. It's kind of like keeping a little mini dinosaur or cow. All they like to do is hang around and munch on things. Um, it is important to make sure you do your research and pick out a species that is good for you. I personally keep a red-footed tortoise, which I do not recommend for people that are new to keeping tortoises or reptiles in general, just because they do have a high humidity requirement, which can be pretty challenging. But some easier tortoise species are the Russian tortoise and the Herman's tortoise. Highly recommend looking into those, checking out all of their care requirements before deciding if it's a good animal for you. But they are very slow moving and very, very perfect for this list. So I had to put them on. Number three are chameleons. So a lot of lizards can be very, very fast. It is part of their survival in the wild to be able to get away from predators. Chameleons don't really have this. They're very, very slow moving creatures. 
Um, a lot of the time they're basically trying to remain hidden and not seen by any predators. So they have typically very slow movements. They actually do little movements that mimic the leaves blowing in the wind. So it may look like they're walking so slow because they go like this, but it's them just trying to pretend they're a leaf. Um, but they are very slow moving. So if you take them out and you handle them, not something you should typically be doing too often with chameleons because they don't really enjoy it and they are highly prone to stress. But when you do handle them, it's not an animal you have to worry about completely running or jumping or flying away from you when you're trying to handle it. Um, so they can be great for that. Chameleons are definitely not a beginner reptile. They're super challenging. I made an entire video going over the challenges of these guys. So it's very important to do a ton of research before deciding if one is good for you. Me personally, I understand the care and all that, the research and everything, but I just prefer slow moving reptiles instead of a lizard where you go in to check on it and it's jumping and flying all over the place. That stresses me out. So that's why I think chameleons are just more of my thing because they have those laid back personalities and they're slow moving. And of course they're just amazing to watch and beautiful creatures. Number four is boas, just like Brazilian rainbow boas, like Bowie, who I had out earlier. She is very slow moving, but the thing is they kind of move constantly. So it is a constant thing, but it's slow. Some snakes in particular are just really fast. They have jerky movements. A lot of colubrids have very jerky movements, which I personally don't like. I think that that stresses me out. I don't really understand the movements but it's like a really good flow with boas because of their movement being so slow. You can kind of tell where they're going, what they're doing. It keeps you hands on. It's just a very relaxing experience in my opinion. So that's why I personally love them the most. Boas are just my absolute favorite. Um, but yeah, definitely slow moving, challenging reptiles, not for beginners. Um, there are so many different boa species, Brazilian rainbow boas, are challenging. I made an entire video on that. Boa constrictors do get pretty big. Uh, they can be a little bit more challenging for people that are new to reptile keeping or snakes. Um, so yeah, but I had to put them on my list because the, one of the reasons I'm drawn to them so much is because of how slow moving they are and it doesn't stress me out. It's very relaxing. It's like therapeutic handling those animals. So I just absolutely love it. Number five is ball pythons. Ball pythons are very similar to the way that they move as boas. Very slow moving, they, it's like you can tell what they're doing, they very much go with the flow. If they aren't doing that, they're typically just in a ball. So a ball isn't going to be jumping or doing anything crazy. Um, when they are a little bit uncomfortable, they will ball up and then eventually if they start to feel more comfortable, they can come out and start slithering around. Their slithering is not really fast movements. It's gonna be those slow movements that I prefer, which is another reason why ball pythons, I just, I love them so much. Um, their movements are really good for people that are trying to get their kids into reptiles and especially snakes. If people are afraid of them, it's a great reptile to handle because ball pythons don't get too big and you can be comfortable holding an animal like that that isn't going to be going very fast or doing fast movements and jerking around. Um, so a lot of people can become comfortable with reptiles and snakes in general with ball pythons in my opinion. Still wouldn't recommend them as a beginner reptile to keep um, because ball pythons can be very challenging. I made an entire video on their challenges as well. So they're absolutely not for beginners, but if you just wanna get into snakes in general and want to handle one, I would recommend to go with a ball python for handling. And number six on my list, is bearded dragons. Bearded dragons typically will just sit there. Speaking of, here is dude. Um, again, each one will have its own personality and act a little bit differently, but dude in particular is very chill. Chacho needs to sniff him every time I take him out. He's obsessed with sniffing dude. But as you can see, bearded dragons are very tolerant with handling for the most part. Each one will have its own personality. Um, but typically when you get a bearded dragon, this is what you're getting. Some of them may run away or not really want to be handled, but you can work with them over time. But these guys are so tolerant and so great. He's gotten so many people comfortable with reptiles and lizards in general. Um, my nieces were like tiny little girls. They were scared of reptiles and dude was the one that they held and 
they were completely chill with him. If you are trying to let a little kid handle your reptile and you want to use a bearded dragon, keep in mind they do have sharp nails. The sharp nails did scare my nieces a little bit, but other than that, they're just really, really great because they just plop and it's very relaxing. Dude, I can just take out with me on walks outside. He'll literally just sit on my shoulder. If I can get him on there. There we go. And this is pretty much what you get. So bearded dragons don't typically do super fast movements. They can, they have the ability to if they are scared, but I think that they should be on the list for slow moving and just overall chill reptiles because I mean, look at dude. How could I not put him on the list? So I would love to hear what you guys think. What reptiles do you think are slow moving that should be added to my list? Do you disagree with any of them? Let me know. And I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys in the next one.